Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, today's video, we are going to be doing the slave cylinder on the transmission. So, you have to do a bunch of things. As you can see on my little board here, I got all kinds of maths going on. So you need to adjust that and make it fit properly. And also in order to do that, I had to put the engine in and my dumbass forgot to hit record. So as you can see, the engine's right in there. And here's a brief clip of putting the engine in. Oh, I never recorded it. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep it there. Yeah, so engine's in. Woo! Forgot to hit record. So yeah, engine went in, and uh, I'll go over that, how I did that, because I have long tube headers and had to make some adjustments with that because of the steering column and stuff, but you'll see that in that video. I'll explain that more. But uh, anyway, let's dive into this slave cylinder and all that fun stuff. All right guys, finally onto the transmission side of things. So we have the old slave cylinder now. If we're reusing the old one, you could keep this, which is an eight millimeter screw that holds this in. You could take that out and disconnect all this stuff. Now this whole thing's going, except I'm saving this. So these are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the slave cylinder. So we're just gonna bang that out real quick. And two. And like I said, there's a little eight millimeter screw holding on this clip. And it's already loose, so I could probably just start it by hand. But you're gonna take that out. And that is free. So it's just a regular friggin' screw, nothing crazy. Now I'm gonna have to find my own way to potentially attach something to here because my new system has longer lines. I don't want it flopping around, leaning up against the exhaust and all that stuff. So now that we got that off, we should potentially be able to get this out. So I can spin this around here because that's going and this just slides right off. Nothing crazy. So our slave cylinder is liberated. I would throw it, but I'm gonna reuse parts. So I'm gonna gently put it down. And that is what the inside looks like now. Would be a good idea to spray it with brake clean, just clean all the crap out of there because you don't want your brand new clutch getting dirty. So, I mean, it's gonna get dirty on its own, but whatever. But I'm gonna spray this with brake clean real quick, clean it up, and go on to the next part. All right, guys, now into the next part. Now for this uh, tilting unit, you get this plate with the threads. You're gonna stick it on and get it to sit in the cup here. If it will, there we go. And then try and get the bolt holes to jive. And I'm just gonna get these started. I'm not torquing them down yet. I'm just getting them started and on. And then when I like what I got, I'll torque it down and finish it up. And I'm just gonna snug it down. So snug and snug. There we go, that looks very good. All right, guys, now we got the slave cylinder itself. So you're going to spin this on and get it close enough into a position where you think it'll work. And let's see if we get this started. There we go. So we'll just spin, 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 spin. Get it in a position close enough to what you think you want. We have a lot of wiggle room here. Ideally, we want that. And then where this little ear hole is, you're just going to shove this little doohickey in. You're going to line it up somehow, get it close enough. Get it close enough to like that little hole and you're just going to start it. You don't have to do anything crazy just yet. So right there is our initial setup and I'm going to tell you something right now. The bottom line is always going to be the feed line. So this is going to come down from the master cylinder and this is going to be your bleeder because Air likes to go up, so that was the idea behind that. The directions say that. So we'll see what this looks like. And also we can move this thing around if we want. Uh, we could spin this plate a little bit. We have two holes lined up. Those are the only places you could go, but you have several of these other little holes scattered about here. So let's go into the car and get our measurement. And let's finally get this transmission put in. All right guys, under the car. And we are now going to torque these down. Now there's multiple methods of doing it. You can just go to the 74 foot pounds or 
you could do it in a sequence. Like, I alternate, but go 15 pounds to start, then go up to 37, then go to your 74. Now, do yourself a favor and get one of these little locking tools that locks your flywheel so it doesn't spin on you when you go to torque it. So we're going to do 15 pounds right now, get that out of the way, and then go up to 37, and then go to 74. Okay, start up top. Come down. And 15. All right. I also Loctited all these, so do yourself a favor and do that. Now we're going to go up to 37 foot-pounds. Okay, 37 foot-pounds. Here we go. One. Six. All right, now we go up to 74 foot-pounds. All right, hopefully I get enough ass on this. One. Ugh. 74 foot pounds all around. All right, guys. Got the flex plate on, just barely got it started. Now, do yourself a favor, clean the entire flywheel with brake clean, and also the plate on the flex plate clean that with some brake clean as well. So now the goal here is to get the clutch as centered as possible, which looks like uh, somewhere there. So right there centered. So now what you want to do is you want to snug these down just a little bit until it bottoms out and you want to kind of alternate because the flex plate will crush and break your clutch. So you do not want to mess that up. I'm going to do that real quick, and then we'll get to the torque sequence. All right, going to go to 52 foot-pounds, and we're going to do it like we do a tire, just bounce all over, and then hit it one time around. Nothing crazy. So, start up top. One, two, four, five, and six. Oh, cool. Okay, we are all torqued up and ready to go. This thing will slide right out beautifully, so our input shaft will slide right in. Just like I do with your mom. Get in there. Force penetration. Alright guys, now into the fun stuff. Now we have to make measurements to adjust our slave cylinder and try and get it so that we have a small little gap between the flex plate on the clutch to the face of the slave cylinder. So, a little micrometer to help us out. But first, you need something to span the gap between the transmission face where the bell housing goes and also from the bell housing. So we're gonna start, bought this little bar from the hardware store. Seems like it'll work. So, let's get a quick measurement. Okay, got a little measurement there. Looks like uh, 177 thousandths. So we're gonna go to our handy dandy board over here and write that down. Okay, bar thickness with three C's. So we got 0 0.177. So that's the size of the bar. And then we also have to get the gap. So we'll put, so we're gonna need the bell housing to the clutch. And we'll also need the trans to the face of the slave cylinder. So let me start getting that process going so we get everything set up and then we'll start taking our measurements. Now the thickness of the bar, that comes into play because there's one point where I believe you're gonna be subtracting that from your measurement and adding to that from your measurement. But let me play that out. We'll go underneath the car and start doing the transmission side, the bell housing side, I should say get that measurement, and then we'll move on to the transmission side and start adjusting that slave cylinder. All right guys, I'm just gonna finish putting the bolts into the bell housing, and I don't torque these down because they're kind of a pain in the ass to get to, some of them, so what I do is I just tighten it down nice and tight. I will put the torque specs on the screen if you're interested in that. So I'll put the rest of these bolts in and then we'll get our measurement. All right, guys, so now we're going to make our measurements. So you're going to put that bar across the face of the transmission bell housing. And you're going to measure right to these little forks here. So you want to get like the tip because that's obviously the closest point to the throwout bearing as it goes in and out. 
So we got our little tool here. We're gonna slide that down so we can get a measurement. I'm gonna measure off the bar and just push this against one of these little forks. So let's see if we can achieve that. So we got our straight bar. We're gonna go, go, go. I gotta come down lower. Something like that. And then we're gonna push. So we're at, let's see if you can see it. So that's what we're up against. We're at 2.240. Let's write that on our board and get to work on the transmission itself. All right, guys, we got our bell housing to clutch. Wrote down our 2.240. Now, the importance of getting that bar thickness, the three C's, is because for this measurement, you need to subtract it. We are at 2.063. Now, the whole point of doing this is to basically get the clutch to match up to the face of the slave cylinder. And then you would deduct this to get your number that that magic number that you want but let's go on to that and try and figure that out all right guys got our sleeve cylinder exactly where we want it so i will show you how i did the measurement now this mounting bracket for the sleeve cylinder it sticks out further than the face of the transmission so what i did was put the bar across the top like that, I measured the gap from the base plate to the bar, and I got 53 thousandths. So, let's come over to the board. See, this is too bright. So that's the thickness of our bar, plate to transmission phase. So, we took the 177 minus the 53 thousandths and got 124 thousandths. Now you gotta watch out with this thing. This thing comes out a little bit. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. So I measured from the throw out bearing face plate to the base plate for the slave cylinder. And I messed around with that a couple times, but ultimately we got our right number, which is right here. Now, this number here was the measurement plus that 124. So that number is those two numbers combined. And this was our bell housing to clutch. Obviously that number minus the thickness with three C's to our 2.63 thousandths. So when we add that together, we got 1.934. And when we deducted it, we got 129 thousandths. Now I had a measurement before that was 116 thousandths. That was in spec, but I wanted to go a little bit more. So our target, was 125 thousandths plus or minus 25 thousandths, so 100 thousandths to 150 thousandths. We're at about 130, so I'm very happy with that. So now that we got that stuff, the job is not done. You still have to bleed the system, you gotta get the transmission in and all that fun stuff. So, one thing to keep in mind, the highest most line, that is gonna be your bleeder line, the lowest most line is gonna go up to the master cylinder. So it's gonna feed in, it's gonna go in here somewhere. I may divert it back here, I don't know yet. I gotta see how it lands. And then this one's gonna come out the top and I'm probably gonna angle it back there somewhere because I have this remote bleeder line that I'm gonna transfer over and I'll find a home for it around the transmission and the brackets and I'll try and keep it tucked away so it doesn't fall down and you know drag on the ground or rupture or any of that stuff. So the only thing left to do is just take these bolts out and this pin, I use the bigger pin for ease. The smaller pin's gonna be used. That's what actually holds the slave cylinder in place, which seems sketch, but I guess it works. So I'm gonna swap this out. I'm gonna lock tight all these and I'm gonna lock tight these 10 millimeter bolts and put them back in. And this should be a wrap on this aspect of the job. So yeah, if you have any questions about doing this, uh, Leave a comment. Uh, I'll try and answer it the best that I can for you. And also probably a thing to remember is in case your measurements are off and you go to put the transmission in and it's hitting resistance, like the throw out bearings hitting the forks of the clutch, take it out and reassess your measurements because you don't want it hitting. You want that little 100 to 150 thousandths gap because you don't want that sitting on there. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of fine if it does, it's gonna make contact anyway, but 
the manufacturer recommends that gap. So we're gonna go with that. I'm right, gonna Loctite all those bolts up, get it squared away and get the transmission ready to be put in. And then we could check our measurements, finally have the transmission in and, you know, get that situated, get the headers all put back in and we'll go from there. All right guys, I'm getting ready to put the transmission in, but before I do that, I want to change the rear seal. I've taken this drive shaft out a couple times and it hasn't been leaking, but before I put it in, it's a cheap part. I'm going to figure that out. It looks like that'll fit. Uh, I've never done this before, but I would imagine you could just kind of maybe stick something in there and freaking pull it out, but we'll play with it and we'll see what the process is to do this. All right, guys, I just cut the little extension off of this just to get a better look in there. It looks like there's a little valley in there. You might be able to get something to pry in there. So we're going to give that a try. Yeah, that's coming out. Cool. Oh, shit. There it goes. Now, another thing to remember, drain your fluid before you do this or you're going to have a big mess. Yeah, it doesn't look like I scuffed anything up. So that's good. Uh, the seal that came out, it doesn't look like it had any RTV on it. So I'm probably going to go the same route. Uh, put a little brake clean in there to clean it out and try and clean up all this fluid. So let me clean this up real quick and then we'll figure out how to install the new one. All right guys, I did absolutely zero research into this, so do your own. Uh, when I took the old one out, it was pretty dry. Actually, it was very dry around the ring. So I'm assuming you put this in dry. Uh, I was contemplating putting a little bit of trans fluid around it to slide it in better, but I'm not sure what the right answer is. But anyway, do your own research. I got a ball joint press. Uh, this fits perfectly around here. So I'm not gonna go nuts, but I'm gonna give it a couple taps just to get this thing seated. I mean, I have this thing on wheels anyway, so it's probably gonna roll on me, but see what we can get. Let's make sure this thing's sealed up all the way around. Feels like it's bottomed out. Yeah, that looks good. All right, tapped it down. It's all flush all around. The metal showing in there is very good. So can't complain about that. If you're just changing this part, uh, when you go to put the drive shaft in, it's a good idea to lube that up with a little tranny fluid to get it in there so you don't have dry metal on dry rubber. Let's move on to getting this in the car. guys got the transmission made it up now I just got to bolt it in get somebody started put the bracket in the back here with my new bushing and I'll get back to you as soon as I get this snugged up all right guys got the transmission bolted up to the bell housing now I wanted to check to make sure the throw out bearing was not touching the springs on the clutch I shoved the flashlight up in there I took a picture and I will superimpose that picture into this video as you'll see right now now just to give you some context uh the picture is zoomed in because i could not get a good view of it so i zoomed in like three and a half times zoom with my uh camera phone or my phone i should say now just to show you some comparisons on what to look for while you're in there now there's no way to get the perfect measurement by looking through a little peephole but I could just give you some context for it. Right there is what a hundred thousandths looks like. Very small. That is the minimum we could do. Now, if you look in that picture again, the head of this little screw is 190 thousandths. That's too big. And right there is what 149 thousandths looks like. It's hard to see in there, but 
at least you can see that we have a gap between the throw out bearing and the springs on the clutch. I mean, if you want to go crazy and take the transmission out again and you have an easier way of doing it, of getting the transmission out, I'm on the ground like an idiot. But if you want to, if you want to play with that measurement, you can, but I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, even with a further back picture, it's, it looks like it's got a good gap. So I'm going to run with it. And if something doesn't seem right, like I'm not going to put the exhaust or anything in. If something doesn't seem right, I'm, I'll, I'll pull the transmission again. I don't care. I want this done right. I'm happy with the progress right now. So before I go bolting the transmission up to the body, uh, I want to get all the internal stuff done because there is a plate that goes down. It, it studs through and you got to tighten them up and it's easier if the transmission is dropped a little bit. So I'm going to take advantage of that while I'm in that position. So stay tuned while I bang that out real quick.